Hey, we're expert artists. So today I'm going to show you how to use this pen right here. It's a Pilot Varsity fountain pen and how to make some really nice drawings. When I was in Europe, I took my sketchbook and did some sketches. This one is from Roofs in Toledo, Spain. And I found out that if I applied a little bit of water to these pen drawings, that it really made them kind of interesting because the ink is not waterproof. So let's look at this pen. It's a fountain pen, so it's a little bit different. The tip releases ink as you apply pressure. You can apply a little bit of pressure, or a lot of pressure like that, or just a little bit like this. It's pretty smooth, it releases a lot of ink, it's very nice. The ink doesn't have to be completely wet. In fact, it can be fairly old. But when you apply water, like I'm doing here with a brush, the ink picks up a little bit. So let's talk about some of the materials that you have in your kit. First of all, you have the pen, which we've talked about here. Also included, is a brush. Pretty simple brush. You also have this drawing paper. Now not included in your kit is just a regular old pencil. You probably have one of these laying around the house. You need some sort of water container. I like to have one big enough that it holds a lot of water. That way you'll have cleaner water for your project. Some sponges, also not included in your kit, but these would be good to have. Any kind of sponge really will work. Now, if we want to add a little color to these drawings, one good way is by using something like these watercolor pencils. If you have a watercolor kit, that works pretty good too. For this first project, let's find a good picture to draw. I picked birds because you can find pictures of them almost anywhere in books or magazines or online. I found these and printed them out. I picked birds that were interesting shapes, had interesting color and texture. Just look at the shape of that crane. Another great thing to do is use a digital device like this iPad. The photograph or picture is to give you details and specifics like where darks and lights are, textures and lines, colors, specific shapes, and that kind of thing. I think I'll do a sketch with this little bird right here. I like how he's a very simple shape sort of like shaped like a pear and then he has a little beak and a leg and another leg and kind of a pointy thing over there i'm going to speed this up just a little bit i'm keeping this drawing fairly simple big shapes just little things wedges for the wing little curve for the beak legs going off in different directions but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this pencil drawing because I'm going to go back over it with pen and do the details. Okay, next I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to start sketching some of these simple lines that I see. I'm looking at the photograph and looking at all the details as I start to draw. That's the reason you have a photograph, is so that you can follow some of the details. So you know where things need to be darker, where that eyeball goes, and what some of those textures around the eye and the beak look like. All of these things will help me make this look like a bird. But 
it doesn't need to look exactly like this bird. I'm doing a drawing. And so it's okay that it looks a little bit different than the photograph does. Just putting some lines and some dots on the bottom part of that bird, that helps it look like feathers. About right here, I started thinking to myself, well, this bird needs to be standing on something. So I just hurried and drew a branch in. I started following my sketch in pencil for the tail and then realized I was going to have to make this tail a little bit longer. This is probably enough detail on this bird. I'm just going to put a little couple finishing touches on it. It's a good idea not to do too much. Alright, I'm going to use this brush and just start adding the water. I'm using quite a bit of water. I'm trying to keep the brush going in the same direction as the feathers. And I'm letting just the water do all the work. That's kind of the fun of this technique. The lines get really fuzzy, but they don't go away. So once this all dries, they'll still be there. It's kind of nice though, because those lines look fuzzy, like feathers. So this works great for drawing birds. I picked this picture because it has a little bit of different textures in it. It's got a, a very simple um, design in the water. It's got um, some darks in certain places, some, some different textures. And so I thought it was just a, a very simple one to do this kind of drawing from. We'll speed this section up just a little bit as I do this drawing. Now you might notice that I've already done a very light sketch just to kind of get the shape of the river and where I'm going to start drawing in some of the leaves and some of the branches and some of the uh, grass that are along the edge of that little river. I'm just drawing in some some different textures. Since this is a sketch I'm probably not going to put a lot of detail into it. I just want to get a feel for this little curve in the riverbank. Keep in mind that the more ink you put on the page, the more ink will come up when you start adding water. All right, so that's probably good enough for that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a couple of different things. You can use a sponge with a little bit of water. I'm just gonna put the water over here, actually. Get it wet. It doesn't have to be super wet, it can be, but since I want all of that to be dark, I'm just gonna go in there and kind of move some of this ink around. The more water you have in your sponge when you're doing this, the looser and kind of more flowing all of this ink will be. You can see how much of that ink has come up off the page and it's kind of moving around. A paintbrush gives you a lot more control. You can kind of see where you're smearing the ink around and you can also make more precise lines 
and sections. A brush is always good to work on these small little details. You can just use the very tip of the brush. You're basically just making the ink wet again, smearing it around with water. Just look at all these interesting effects in the final product. Water spots, smears, a lot of it's just very unexpected. You never know where you're going to find a great image to draw. This old truck was hiding in the weeds. You have to start somewhere with your drawing. It looks like I started with the outline of the cab of the truck and some of the lines that defined the body. And then I just started adding some darks in here. You'll see that I'm making a few different types of lines with the pen. This kind of, we call it cross hatching, is mostly just meant to make an area dark. Just filling in that wheel well there with a little darkness. You can add as much detail as you want into these areas. I know I'm going to come back later and put some water on it and that a lot of that detail might get washed away. You can see from the photo here that uh, there's lots of just rust color in this. Colored watercolor pencils on this one. A little bit goes a long way with these watercolor pencils. I'm going to blend a bunch of different colors together to kind of make some of the interesting rust colors. So I've got a little bit of pink here. I'm going to add some orange, um, maybe some brown, and some purple. I'm just softly mixing these colors together. When the water comes, it will mingle them together quite nicely. The original color of this truck was some sort of uh, light green. Had a there's a faded star on the door. I just wanted to hint at it, not make it too obvious. I'm just going to enhance some of the color that I've put on here, making it a little darker in some places. You can obviously do a lot more on your uh, drawings if you're adding color. Now you can add the water as fast as you want or slow. You can be a little more controlled. I like to put it on kind of thick and see what happens. If you put too much water on your surface, you can always go in with a sponge like I do here and just to lift a little bit out. I used a lot of water in that one section. In this section right here, I'm using a little bit less on you can really see the uh, the brilliance of those watercolor pencils. How saturated the color is. I'm just going to blend some more of this pen and move everything around a little bit. Make it look really loose and kind of have everything feel about the same. I started this drawing the same way with a pencil sketch. I found out very quickly that tractors are hard to draw. One of the reasons that you really want to pick a good photograph to work from. The photograph that I was working from was a little bit too dark. I wasn't able to see a lot of the details. And details are the reason that you have a photograph. I'm ready to add the watercolor. 
I have a fairly large watercolor palette. Yours might be a little bit smaller. If you need some area to mix color, you can use an old ceramic plate or some sort of plastic tray. I mix in a few different colors into this blue to make it more interesting. As you start to apply color to your drawing, the water will start to smear the ink around. If you want some areas to be more colorful, you can look for places where there's less ink and apply color there, kind of like I'm doing on the front of the tractor here. I'm being a little more careful here with where I'm putting the color because I, I uh, want that blue to sort of just stay on the uh, tractor body parts and the fenders and the transmission and the parts that are covering the engine. You can always add a little bit more color in as the paint is drying as it's still a little bit wet. You'll just put a little more color in your brush and dab it into an area. I wasn't quite sure what color to paint the wheels, so I started off with a little bit of a brown. The sponge definitely makes a, a different type of effect as you're adding the water. It's a little bit more random, a little bit harder to control. But you can also use it super wet or super dry. You can even pick up a little extra water if there's too much of it. Just kind of dab it out like that. As I was saying before, if you have a surface to mix your watercolor on, I like to mix a little bit of other colors together. It makes a more interesting combination like the red that's going on the center of these wheels. I'm not even applying any color right here. I'm just mixing the ink with some water to darken that wheel. getting closer to being done I'm just looking for places that I can darken and fill in so that they don't feel like they're unfinished or unpainted or unthought about You can see I've got the photograph there at the bottom of the image, bottom of the frame. I'm just using the photograph to kind of tell me places that I could make darker or make more colorful. It kind of just gives me some suggestions. I really like the red on these wheels but it seemed like it just needed a little bit more. I'm gonna put just a, a little chunk of just bright red in there. Well guys, we're coming to the end of this video. Through these four projects, I've shown you this kind of fun technique of mixing pen and, and water together. Your job now is to go find an image and try it out.